say, I don't want to touch that. that. That's poison if it gets into a blog discussion with that. So they run away from it. And it does serve to stifle more direct discussions on both sides of the aisle, frankly. They've been doing that to me. I, I am a pure constitutionalist, but by saying that, I tell you there are advertisers who wouldn't touch me because I'll openly state I believe in the Bible and I believe in the Constitution. I'm I'm meeting uh we're 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 going up the oath keepers are going up to Quartzsite, Arizona to confront a city manager and a and a police chief who've gone against the mayor. I mean he's gone against the elected officials. So there are people waking up. The oath keepers I, I are think great. Are, I think the Tea Party has done a great deal to wake up Americans who now look and say this government is increasingly out of control. We're spending money that we don't have. We're borrowing our children into bankruptcy. It's not fair. It's not right. And it's against the principles that created the greatest country in the history of the world. I said our founding fathers fought the New World Order of their day. The sun never sets on the English Empire. And, and they told us, you know, in advance. Benjamin Franklin, you know, referred to democracy just as you did, you know, as two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. When the illegals are getting all the benefits from, and, and, and that's what happens in, in uh, democracy. As soon as they figure out they can vote themselves money. I believe it was Alexander de Tocqueville who made that comment when he said that this democracy will last about 200 years, and when people figure out they can vote themselves a raise, it'll come crashing down. And that's exactly what we've done, and that's exactly why half the population doesn't pay taxes, because government knows that's my best customer. They'll vote for me every time because I give them more, I give them more. The producing side says, wait, I'm tired of paying for this. I'll join them. And we're increasingly seeing folks go to one of two camps. And that's why we're seeing the political split in this country that we're seeing, is you have the producers versus the consumers. And it will play out in the economy, and it will become increasingly volatile, as we've seen and seen for the last couple of years, but we're also going to see commodity prices continue to rise. So to the extent, and I don't recommend people go all in in gold and silver by any stretch, but I think they should have 10 to 15, maybe even 20% of their asset base in gold and silver and commodities of that nature. We've, we've got uh, places uh, from the United States to buy gold and silver here. but. Who, you know, this has always bothered me a little bit, Steve. Everybody talks about gold and silver, and uh, it's kind of sacred to them. But who sets a price on gold? Well, it actually is more than people think set by the free market. Globally, there is an active market in trading gold. The biggest holders of it, and this is an interesting fact, the biggest holder of gold in the world, uh, it's either number one or number two now, is the International Monetary Fund. Now, right. think about it for just a minute. This is a globally created organization between the United States and some other countries. Where did they get the gold? My guess is they got it from the United States. Yeah, probably from Fort Knox, and uh, they, they did replace some of it with titanium. But Right, which is why the Ron Paul segment is saying, let's audit Fort Knox, too. But I think that people need to look consciously and say, gold and silver have a position in my portfolio, but not all of it. Because to your point, there have been times in the past when governments confiscated gold. So you don't want to bet the farm on it, put everything you have in it, and say, okay, I'm protected. No, you're not. You need to be conscious of the real world in which you live and say, I'll have some of it in gold, but I will hold some cash currency because in a deflationary environment, that's going to become more valuable. And uh, folks need to be conscious. That's the whole point of financial literacy and why I'm on a mission to teach. Well, I think you're doing a great job of teaching. Matter of fact, I just love that phrase that you just used. Bet the farm. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, exactly. That's what we've been doing. That's what the inheritance taxes are about, to keep you from inheriting your family farm, you know, the basis of every civilization. And I'd like to see us move back to that. I'd like to see about that. And, and, I, uh, that's, on the, I, that's on the economy side. You, everything that you've just brought up, Steve, indicates that, and, and the executive order that Obama's put up, indicates the need for the self-sufficient family farm. And, and folks, you can do that in a neighborhood just like Brad Pitt da did down in uh, New Orleans. He put a little bit of uh, 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 solar and a little bit of in a wind generator in a whole block, and you dig up the gar backyard and put a garden in. You got a self-sufficient family farm in a New Orleans neighborhood that's actually making you money because you're selling the power back to the power company rather than uh, 
uh, they have making them buy it from that uh, wind farm on the top of the hill. Right. I mean, we're seeing so much of those types of things happen, and I, I, folks just need to understand that we need to come back to individual empowerment on all levels, small business, small farms, small everything, small education, because it works. Big business, big education, big farming don't work. We've got colleges now that are so expensive folks can't afford to send their kids there. But the solution to that, of course, is to have people not go there, which will cause prices to come down, but instead government jumps in and says, tell you what, we'll loan you the money to go. Well, what that's people exactly, are now that's finding exactly out what that farm council is. That's exactly what that farm council is uh, that they're talking about putting together. Right. And, and it, it, what you've got then is government taking control of those people's lives de facto. When a student comes out of college and they have fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in government loan debt, what most of them don't realize is you cannot go bankrupt on that debt. It stays with you until you pay it off. All right, listen. Let me let me ask you about the. Uh, well, I think I think we've got an answer here. If we can, if if every if every farmer. And this is what I'm proposing to do with this with this event in in Cochise County. The farmers ha and the ranchers have told me they can't get help. Nobody wants to work on a farm, so they hire illegals to work uh, on the farm. I think there's some of that, yeah. And we have uh, that in the Midwest, in, in in the McDonald's environment, the fast food environment. You've got high school students who no longer want to work in those establishments, so the companies can't hire anybody but illegals. That's right. And that is part of this entitlement mentality, again, that's rampant in the United States. Everybody feeling like they're entitled to something that they're not. There's no such thing. They are given things as gifts. It's like schooling in America is no longer thought of as a gift. It's thought of as an entitlement. And when we change to that, to your rancher's point, they're not going to be able to find people to work there because, oh, I don't want to do that work. I want to do what I want. Well, well that doesn't no, work. No, no veterans homeless is the title of my run in Cochise County. No veterans homeless. I want to put the veterans to work on the farms, on the ranches, to for a dual purpose. One, it gives them a place to stay so they're not sleeping in some shelter somewhere. Two, they work on the farms and the ranchers with the ranchers and the farmers and and they learn how to do that and three if everything falls apart next year or this year they're there to defend the families let's just hope that things don't come crashing down because you know and i know you know we've seen the economies in the world change you look at libya right now and the transition taking place there there is a segment of American society that would absolutely love to see that kind of chaos rampant in this country. We can only hope it doesn't happen because that's not a winning scenario for anyone. That's right. One of the problems that we have is how do you how do you fight evil without becoming evil? Now let me yes. so so let me ask you about uh, a couple other things. The spiritual path. Now I'm yeah, not I'm not very big. You know the Constitution protects you. You can worship any way you want. If you want to beat your head against that wailing wall over there, knock yourself out. If you want to stick your nose in the dirt and your ass up in the air and pray to Mecca, I, I'll, I'll try to keep the St. Bernard off of you. But, you know, and, and the the same thing goes for the Christian. You want to pray to God for a Cadillac, do it over there. You know, just don't expect me to get down on my knees with you. I am an individual. I am the free American. And I'm not following a dogma here. What about your spiritual path? Where am, I, well, where am I on your spiritual path? Here's where I come down on that. The Steve Beeman Group is what I refer to as an open community in that I'll welcome anyone in. I don't care what your faith background is. All I ask is this, that we have an intelligent, civil dialogue. I've opened up that I am a Christian and a biblical or Bible-believing Christian. I'm right. willing to discuss that faith with anyone. I'm not ashamed of it, I'm not embarrassed of it, and I'm not ignorant of it. So I welcome people to come in and open up a dialogue. I had a 30-minute discussion recently with a guy who comes out of Islam, and we had a discussion about the parts in both Christianity and Islam that are similar, and a lot of talk about where they're different. The key is we were able to talk about it, and that's what we need is a civil dialogue in this country where people aren't afraid to speak their faith like we're getting now because they're afraid of government sanction or advertiser sanction or anything else. We need very much to be able to discuss things so that as Christians on the evangelical side, we can bring people to the cross 
which is where I think people need to be, but they're not going to come there out of ignorance. They're going to come there out of intelligence, and that's what we want to do on the spiritual path. I, I, uh, I, I published a book, Mystery Babylon, that talks about the, the, the Bible, the, the, and, and it's been pretty amazing that we've been hearing about the Mark of the Beast for 2,000 years, and suddenly it's not only, it's not only feasible, it's not only happening, hell, they got commercials for it. Yeah, yeah we're, and we're seeing the Hollywood culture pack into that, obviously, with the whole 2012 thing. But I, I think the key here is that we as a society need to be able to discuss these things. We need to not judge people from a governmental standpoint one way or the other. We need to let free people exercise free religion. And to the extent people say, I can't go to a public school because I want to teach my child Christian values or Islamic values or Jewish values, whatever, we have now the capability to do robust homeschooling, and let's just hope that we can get those individual people to discuss it with one another and not, you know, to your point, not become evil in trying to bring a better society among ev upon everyone. Yeah, don't try to force nothing. If you, if, if, okay, we got, we got 20 acres over here, and we're going to set up the uh, Liberty Village. This is going to be a Christian Liberty Village. Where this is our theme. This is the way we're sponsored. We may use TVs. We may use yurts. We might use uh, uh, blow up houses. You know, whatever, right. what, whatever works. But we're going to generate our own electricity. We're going to, and, and we'll be able to teach you there. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're Muslim. Well, the Muslim community is over there. But you're welcome to come into our restaurant, eat our food, and and see how we like to live. That's right, and I think if we can do that as individuals again, you know, if you look at racism, it typically is not generated by individuals. It's generated by groups, and the higher you go in the group ordering, the bigger the racism gets. When you look at what caused slavery, it was government in bed with business that caused slavery. It wasn't individuals. And we need to go back to that, because individuals can communicate with one another. Organizations have a lot harder time doing that. I, I I've been to AA meetings, and the only way anything got done was when I did it. I told them that, what we were doing. Here's what we're doing, guys. I don't like groups, and uh, that's uh, you know again democracy. Two wolves and a sheep bone. I watch for dinner. Now, now, how do you propose to do this, Steve? What what about your financing? What about how are you going to set this up? You know, I, I recommend that you go see the Liberty Villagers because that ain't just a, a private thing for me. This is a way to do everything that you're suggesting here. Right. Well, my mission of the Steve Beeman Group is being funded right now by me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we obviously, I have a product that I allow people to buy called Path to Prosperity, which is a two-volume, 12-CD audio library that contains 25 what I think of as critical life lessons on economics and finance. We put that out at $79, and we do sell a fair amount of that. So we thankfully can support those people on a better financial path by using that program, and that's a big part of our funding as well. Now, the, uh, this is, a, this is a, a CD set. Yes, it is. And what I did is I took my life's experience, having spent 25 years on Wall Street, I put it into 25 lessons in audio, that people can listen to, and it's everything from how banks really work and from the inside out up to how does all this trading work, how do the markets work, who is manipulating the prices, how can you become in that game rather than sitting outside and watching that game. So the Path to Prosperity has been presented to homeschooling communities around the world, around the country. We've presented it into very selective groups as we've begun our marketing efforts. But it is together with that and my own capital that the Steve Beeman Group is on a march from Maine to California to change the lives of as many people as we can. And by doing that, we believe we can change the nation. Well, I'd certainly like to include your plan in, uh, in our Little Red Schoolhouse and Timothy Bible College uh, curriculum. Well, clearly I support that. In fact, I've got a community college out east that is using My Path to Prosperity as a core curriculum for its freshman incoming students. I would suggest that anyone from about the age of 15 up should know this information. It's absolutely life critical. People cannot anymore bury their heads in the sand and say it doesn't matter to me. It does matter to them. That would be, that would be in the emotional path, uh, is, is, and you suggest that in this emotional path you learn to leave the past behind and reprogram your mind to incorporate the powerful attitudes 
shared by the Winters of Society. That's Tell me right, about that it? because I think I think I've been under a psychological attack here for the last seven years, Steve, and I may just be pulling out of that. I lost my family, I lost my business, I lost the motorcycle, I lost everything by the time they allowed me to wake up. And, and so I've been through a process of, of trying to reprogram my mind to realize hey, I'm a writer, I, I've, I've got great ideas, I, I, I've always been pretty successful, and um, I, I'm reprogramming that, and, and it's taking effect. The, it's like once you, once you start thinking in a little differently, instead of being the loser or, or, or the victim, then the the power comes back to you, like having uh, dinner with a share of a coach or breakfast with a share of a coach East County. That's right. And what people in this country have to do is get beyond what they're told each and every day. They are told by the national media every day: you are dependent on the federal government for your survival. You are dependent on everyone else for your survival. You are a victim of A, B, and C. And people begin to believe it. And they need to move beyond it. One of the things we've written about in the Steve Beeman Group is getting beyond apathy. Because this apathetic thing that goes on in the United States, and people just saying, I don't care, that's got to end. People need to wake up, they need to rise up, and they need to understand that they are in control of their own life. And anyone who tries to step on their freedoms to live life on their terms needs to be brought out in the open, shine the light on them, and if they're elected, voted out of office. And many of the problems we've got now can't be solved by voting because Obama has basically installed czars, councils, uh, 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 whatever. Uh, these are all Soviet-style control groups. Clay, I agree with you, but I do believe that if enough Americans wake up and enough Americans start to, if we did one true vote for the presidency of the United States, all that he's done could be unwound with the stroke of a pen. All of it. Yeah, I've got I've got a few people that would like to uh, run for president if they had the financing, and if we had control of the media, the, 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 the whole control of the media, I find that to be a problem. Now, you know, if you try it's to discuss that... Though, the, the internet has destroyed the control grip the national media had. Let's go back in our lives, and you and I are old enough to remember the 70s where you had three television channels. Therefore, if you were watching television, you had a one-third of watching any of those channels. So the media really did control the message. Now, between the 200 cable channels and the unlimited internet channels, the media message is becoming much more fragmented. We're now able to get messages out direct to the people in ways never before dreamed of, and I think that does allow them for the independent candidates to start getting power. You don't necessarily need the infrastructure of the big political parties anymore, and I think there is hope for the American people that they can begin to put people back in Washington who believe in liberty and freedom. All it takes 10 million people walking in on Washington and, and saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to take a vote now. And That's right, and I think that, that, you know, under the Steve Beeman Group, my goal is to get 10, 20, 30 million members of that. We can all help each other because it's not about me, it's about the individual. And to the extent individuals have ideas that can help other individuals, we want to share those. And my goal is to have a Steve Beeman community built in every city in this country in the next 10 years. You're welcome to, you're, for, for small compensation, Steve, you can use Liberty Villages. <laughs> well, that would be a wonderful place to and start. And I know, LibertyVillages.org you know, LibertyVillages.org is the website, and it's still uh, it's still under development. I've just put the, uh, what we're going to try to do is use that as a vehicle for this uh, event in Cochise County to put uh, make sure we don't have, A, any more homeless veterans. I think that's just, I, I think that's uh, uh, an American tragedy. And, and two, we want to, the, the the term was used, and I, I vetoed the term, boots on the ground. We need boots on the ground to stop the, the illegals from coming here. We can't stop the illegals from coming in here as long as the feds are letting them in. And paying them to do it. And paying them to do it. That's right. They are. That's exactly what they're doing. They're coming up here, and they go right into that uh, economic security office, and they got money. They got a job. And let's be honest, the politicians do it because they now have a voter for the rest of their life, and multi-generations of voters. Right. So that needs to be addressed. The American people are clearly on the side of real immigration reform, 
and we need to start getting that voice out. And to your point on the veterans, it is a great tragedy in this country that the men and women who served for us in the armed forces are treated so reprehensibly by this government. When they're willing to throw a trillion dollars to the major banks, they're not willing to throw a little bit to veterans. These are people who we owe. They've done their jobs, they've served our nation, they've served our liberties, they've served our freedoms, and we cannot turn our backs to these Steve, people. Steve, it's worse than that. They they doused us with Agent Orange in Vietnam. I've still got friends that are suffering from that. And in Iraq, they here here son, use this ammunition. It'll kill you in twenty years, but you know, right. they, uh, it'll take that tank out right now. They they are they are literally killing our veterans off here. They, they don't want combat hardened vets coming back still loyal to the Constitution coming back here. They, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and, and that's, uh, you know, I intend to, to try to wrap this all together and I'd really appreciate you speaking there or having a booth there. If you, if you, just, if you just take a booth there, you might, matter of fact, you might be the first one to get the booth since I just put the uh, whole flyer together up on my website yesterday. Well, let's certainly <laughs> communicate information on that. I'll be sending you follow-up information, Clay, and you've got my information. We'll just get that done because I think it's something I hope people will attend. And I think to the extent we can wake people up on the veterans issues and on the immigration issues, there's a lot to be said then for a constitutional approach to both. Yes, sir. I I, I think so. And and uh, you're you're traveling the country. What are you doing? Are you traveling the country and you're you're speaking? You're going on all these radio shows. Your your product seventy nine dollars. We got links to the Steve Beeman Group up on my site. And I'd appreciate it if you've got an email list. Send uh, this this show. I can arrange it. Uh, you can send me an email if you if you need help with doing it. Get the show out. Well, we would appreciate. I'd love to help you with it, and I'd like any help I can get from you and your listeners because this message must go out from coast to coast. I agree with you 100, percent and I'd like to have you back. I'll book you again in a couple of weeks here because it's, 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 they, these conversations these, these conversations are exactly what we need. It's exactly what you said, Steve. It's being able to communicate. Yep, and we're losing that in this great nation. We need to bring it back. You know, I, I certainly, <laughs> you know, I, I've got a little bit of an attitude, you know, lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way, you know? It, yep. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm an individual, folks, and, and, you know, I'm the free American. I, I'm just tired of being the only one. Well, American is built on the strength of individual freedom and liberty, and we need to continue that and get back to it where it's been lost. Otherwise, this grand experiment ceases to become the last best hope on Earth. Well, what did, what did Benjamin Franklin say? What form of government have you wrought for us, Mr. Franklin? A constitutional republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Right, and so we and men of good hearts around this country join together, and that does not exclude women, because women certainly participate, but men and women of good hearts come together, we push forward on an agenda of freedom and liberty, and together we get the nation back. You're on the Voice of Liberty radio show right now, the Free American Hour, and and what they've done with with me and and I see him doing the oldest maxim in warfare, Steve. And we are at war here. There is a war against, and it's against the American people now. You know, 50 years ago it was against the Palestinians, and now it's against the Palestinians. You know, they 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 choose wars, and I filmed Homeland Security meetings. You know, in case of a single outbreak of smallpox in a major metropolitan area, we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops to control the American people. Because some of them just won't follow orders. Some of them want to be individuals. That's right. So the war is against us, and the oldest maxim in warfare is divide and conquer. Oh, you're a Republican? I'm a Democrat. You're, you're, a, you're a liberal? I'm a conservative. Yep. How do we overcome that? I think we overcome it by a recognition that we are all individuals. We're all equal under God. Whether you take that as a theology or not, it's a truth. We're all equal. And we need to begin by empowering people with true knowledge to get out of the spun information they get, but to go back to life lessons that incorporate freedom, liberty, self-responsibility, and self-reliance. And if we can educate America on those five paths, then this country can rise up once again and become the greatest hope on earth. Every Liberty Village will have three documents on the wall of every village. 
the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence. Behind my desk in my office are those three documents. Yes, sir. And and it, it's a, let me let me ask you about this a spiritual path. We got just a few more minutes here, and and uh, I'm uh, urging everyone to go to your website and check it out. But uh, what about the spiritual path? I mean, is it just an accident that uh, you know you got sent here to be on the show to be with me to meet me? I clearly, based on everything I've written, believe in three basic principles. I believe there is a God who created the heavens and the earth. I believe that we as people are separated from that God by virtue of our imperfection, and I believe that Jesus is the propitiation of our sin. Therefore, my spiritual path is one of evangelical Christianity. As I said, I've, I'm open to others, and I'm open to dialoguing with other faiths. That's not a problem for me, but I've taken an approach to my spiritual path to learn more and more about the Gospels, more and more about the Scriptures. I just finished reading Usher's Annals of the World, um, so I, I spend a great deal of time on my spiritual path reading books that build a more foundation of faith, because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's what I call ignorant Christianity. I don't like it when people say I'm a Christian. Why? Because I believe. What do you believe? That I'm a Christian. Why do you believe that? Because I'm a, I mean, it's, it's circular. Let's have some foundational knowledge on what we believe and why we believe it and use our intellect that's God-given to support our faith, not to ignore our uh, faith. Jesus told you, you can do what I do and more, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, and to me, that's what the churches have done. They tried to, to elevate Jesus to a level that was unattainable by us. And I believe, I believe with uh, with with the, we've all got a direct contact with God, don't they call it a soul? I believe that's true. Yes. So the spiritual path is exciting for me. I plan on writing a library of spiritual information, which will be an introduction to all of the world's major faiths and the foundations that each of them believes and why they're true. Because to the extent we now have competing religions around the world, we need to be able to intelligently discuss our Christianity. I uh, I certainly agree with that. Yeah, it's so I urge folks to visit SteveBeamanGroup.com, visit me on Facebook. Um, I've got about 2,000 fans on Facebook, and I'm more than happy to have folks subscribe to my weekly email, which covers all five of the paths, and puts out my weekly article on each of those five, and I'd love to have that relationship built with your audience. All right. We'll do what we can to facilitate that, Steve. I've really enjoyed having you on my show. Really uh, glad to meet you. And you'll be the headliner, and I'll put links to your site up there as one of our main speakers at Tombstone. <laughs> so, I, I'll meet you at the OK Corral. How's that? <laughs> there you go. How fitting could that be? <laughs> Got it up on the website, Steve Beeman. Thank you for being with me, sir. Yeah, it's been my great pleasure. Thank the you. The recording has been completed. All right. Go to freeamerican.com. Check it out. Get uh, get with Steve. Okay.